What's up? Um, you can really always tell what someone's photographic skills are when it requires um, light layering. Uh, someone might be a really good photographer, even an excellent photographer, when it comes to simple things, and obviously photography is as broad as computers. I mean, I know a lot about computers, and I used to be number one person in the world for tech support on the MacBook Air. I still think I'm ranked number two or three. Um, but I mean, computers are a broad topic. Um, I have some old folks that uh, actually call me from work uh, for where I used to work at and want me to do some uh, work uh, with them on special applications or whatnot, but I'm more of a hardware person, and even though I've messed around with God knows how many thousands of applications. I mean, computers is as broad a, is as broad a topic as photography is, and uh, they wanted me. They just thought that I would automatically know how uh, uh, Excel works, and I haven't used Excel for five years, and you know I'm not very skilled with it. And uh, they just didn't understand that, even though I had these mad crazy skills with fixing their computers and you know telling them how to you know upgrade things and, uh, you know, uh, built, uh, built their website that uh, I didn't know how to teach their new guy how to use uh, the Excel. I mean, and the same is true of photography. I mean, it's just a huge, huge, huge topic. And, uh, you know, the person that might be an expert at the photojournalistic work, you know, doesn't know the first thing. I mean, all these guys, these paparazzis, I mean, they've got their camera glued to their effing hand 24 hours a day they are chasing around these celebrities and, you know, they make good money. And I guess it's uh, exciting work. I, I used to know a couple people like that and, uh, you know, you got to be adrenaline. It, it's just, to me, it's a horrible job, but uh, they love it. But they might not be good at uh, light layering and, uh, like, shooting models, for example. You know, or someone that's a wedding photographer is no good at photojournalistic work. And, you know, I'm not going to feign that uh, any excellent photographer is... Uh, if you can call someone an excellent photographer, in their own narrow spectrum of experience um, is going to be good in another type of photography or knows about gear. Back when I was in the photography school, uh, some of the best shooters in the world would come by and I got to shoot with some of them. We did some uh, daylight, uh, some, excuse me, some uh, sunrise shots out in Ormond Beach with, I can't remember his name, he had curly hair, he was a really ugly schmuck and uh, God, I can't remember his name. Um, Gregory somebody. He's a famous photographer. I should know his name, but I mean, that's been over 20 years ago. Um, we got to shoot with him, and after he was done with his models, he had a male model and a female model that were dressed in white linen, and the sunrise was coming up on Ormond Beach, and we did some model shots. I mean, it was straight out of the sort of stuff that, you know, all these guys over on ModelMayhem.com, uh, it's a website where, where people that uh, shoot nothing but models that they do, and it's fun. Of course, I don't like getting up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> and when I was living in Daytona Beach, driving down to Ormond Beach, but uh, it was a lot of fun. But he had the models uh, get in the ocean, and uh, the waves, there were no waves at that point in time, so it was very calm to shoot. The waters were calm, and... Uh, you know, I thought of something at the time I didn't mention to him that I'd thought of before, and uh, and uh, it was about using uh, strobes at the water level uh, that had commander mode. I think it was SB26s back then that uh, you could slave them off of uh, uh, my Nikon uh, D4S, which I had in my hands at the time, and I forget what sort of uh, film camera he had, but you know, actually submersing those, and I've used that a few times, but. When it comes to light layering, a lot of people, you know, just, they can be excellent photographers and uh, I was recently watching uh, a video that someone pointed to me and, uh, you know, you can always criticize someone else's work, like you should have done this or you should have done that and talk is cheap, of course, and I can't stand people, you know, a few people said uh, recently, they said, well, you've got way too many videos and, uh, well, I just, that's how I write too, I mean, it's like boom, 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 yeah, I know I make a lot of videos but I'm not you know, uh, trying to make a quantity of videos, it's just how I work, and actually it's how I write too, it's like bullet, boom, 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 boom. And uh, I guess I could do these fancy productions, but I don't have the time for that, I just like to hit the points, and that's my particular style. But I was uh, watching a show where someone was doing some water work, and uh, I was criticizing, in my mind, how that they were shooting, and you know, they're missing so much stuff. 
and the you know the ways to do you got to be thinking out of the box you got to I mean obviously creativity and the composition is really important and I wanted to show you a trick uh, that I've used a few times you can use either uh, the heavy duty ziplocs and double bag them I use a, a snoot on a cheap uh, speed light that I'm not worried about it dying in case I get a light leak. This is an SP23 with a snoot. Um, I don't have it now, but the smaller uh, uh, Tupperware uh, units like this do is place the unit in there with a wireless trigger, or if it's like an SP26 or SP28, not 28, but 26. Or uh, I would never use an SB800. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to use a, a Pocket Wizard with one of these units as a wireless trigger and you place it in either a double ziplock bag or in a Tupperware container. You're only placing it about a foot and a half underneath the water so the pressure isn't that great. And uh, once you actually place it in the Tupperware container, you actually you bag this, a smaller Tupperware than this, okay? You tape this inside, so even though you have a translucent window here, this is kind of a dirty Tupperware container. <laughs> And uh, you tape it in here so that it actually is pointing out to the side of the Tupperware container. You place your wireless trigger in there if you need to, which I use the Pocket Wizards, and I've got like five or six of them. And I've got insurance on them in case they get damaged, but they're only 130, 140 bucks a piece. And you actually duct tape this to uh, your monopole. I mean, you could use a regular stick or something if you want to get your monopole up. I mean. You're not going to get your monopole, you know, damage your monopole by sticking it in the water about a foot and a half under. You're actually doing a, water, a model shot to, at water level, or if they're slightly above the water and you yourself are at water level, you can actually use a gel filter. But you're just uh, placing uh, your uh, speed light directly underneath the water and pointing it up at the model. You're illuminating her body. You can use a fill flash behind you. You really got to invest in some pocket wizards. You don't have to buy the expensive pocket wizards, but... Uh, you know, even the cheap Chinese ones, whatever you could afford. I use the Pocket Wizards because they're totally reliable and they're tough little suckers, even though they are kind of expensive. But, you know, some fill flash for the face, but also really neat light layering effects. And I actually will stick this underneath the water, and the speed light will fire through the water and illuminate the model's body. This is perfect uh, for, like, pool shots. Um, perfect uh, for water level shots. It will actually illuminate the ripples uh, in the water. It will create the most beautiful images you've ever seen. And uh, so start thinking out of the box and stuff like that. You've got to be thinking about light layering and you've got to get creative. So that's why you need to study. You'll think, well, why do I need to study all these light, uh, light mods? I'm having a difficult, difficult enough time right now with uh, trying to figure out my camera for perfect shot and composition. But part of that composition are understanding these special light layerings that will get you more work, make you more money, and make you a better photographer. you got to be thinking about crap like that. And how many people think, well, I'm going to stick a speed light under the water. That's why I've got 18 speed lights. This is why professionals buy these cheap little damn speed lights. Because they don't want to be sticking their $500 SB910s in the water. But they don't mind sticking these little $30 bastards in the water. Um, water is just one example. In a place where it's rough, you know, stick it down in the dirt uh, for fill, fill flash or background illumination. When you got wireless triggers, when you got a pocket full of wireless triggers, and you got you know a little bucket full of uh, these little cheap ass uh, Nikon speed lights, SB23, SB22, which is what this is, and you know what light mods, and you start laying your light. My God, your, your photographs will go from here to here immediately. But that's one example. You know, actually sticking it in a Ziploc container or in a double Ziploc bag, duct taping that to your monopole or a stick or whatever the hell you want, sticking it underneath the water, layering the light, adding effects. People go, holy shit, how did you do that? That is awesome. That is what I want to pay for. That is what pads your portfolio. So you really knew, do need to study all these little oddball tips and tricks on, uh, on light modification. I mean, it is photographia, for example. You know, it's about writing with light. You're going to have to learn these little light mods if you want to actually improve your photography. Anyway, enough said. But think about that, okay? How many people think about sticking a speed light in a Ziploc bag or a Tupperware container? And then sticking that slightly underneath the water to illuminate your model. Stuff like that is important. That's one example out of many. You need to start directing your brain on that railroad track and start thinking in that line of thought. Okay? Bye.